let's get some cartoons and vodka and do them all night long. said that the internet never forgets anything, and that's a stinking lie! Even beyond digital decay, the internet only remembers what it cares to remember. Nude celebrity photos? Those are never leaving circulation. But your embarrassing Christmas party photos? That's gone the moment you delete your Facebook account. And as the upcoming smut purge of Tumblr shows, platform holders have all the real power in these scenarios. I bring this up because I couldn't find out anything about today's manga. The mangaka's name doesn't bring up anything, and the publisher appears to be some sort of self-publishing indie portal, where this may not have even been published. I don't know. The only thing keeping this manga in English circulation is the scan sites, and those are in constant danger of being taken down. And I think that's a shame, because Beauty and the Ham Beast is a really good story. We open on the Beauty and the Ham Beast having a romantic walk home in the rain. This is a flash forward, which I like because it creates tension in how they're going to get to this happy ending. We cut to Reyna getting her snog on the subway to the disapproval of the other passengers. But then her dalliance is spotted by two separate guys who claim she is their girlfriend. It turns into a whole big public spectacle, and Reyna just cannot deal with this drama, so she just owns up to three-timing. The whole scene breaks down into fisticuffs as she leaves. It's lunch break at work, and Reyna is trying to center herself in the bathroom when the Gossip Squad walks in. Apparently the guy she was smooching works at her company and came in all beat up. The ladies proceed to call her a whore and ask where she gets off and are just really mean and not even a little bit worried about being overheard. Reyna, of course, hears all of it. The manga isn't here to slut shame, and neither am I. These ladies are clearly the baddies of the piece. That said... Don't three time, it's generally inadvisable. We cut to a loading facility where Fatty has knocked over some boxes on his co-workers. He gets aggressively chewed out and disrespected by his co-workers and unfortunately definitely broke something in one of the boxes so he has to see his boss. The manga doesn't give him a name and I think there is a reason for that, but I am not calling him Fatty for the whole review. Instead, I'm gonna call him George. George's boss continues the diminishment train as he deducts roughly $300 from George's salary and won't even let him go apologize himself since he's apparently too depressing to look at. And then on the way home he gets mugged! It is just very much not his day. George and Reyna apparently take similar trains regularly as she finds his sweaty presence just one more bad element of her day, whereas for George, seeing such a beautiful lady gives him a bit of a pick-me-up. He catches glimpses of her in the window reflection and thinks about how her life must be tough too. This moment where George thinks that her constant stream of guys must be hard on her, put a pin in that moment, we're coming back to it. George notes that they're coming up on her usual station, but Reyna is still sleeping. He's paralyzed between seeming like a creepy stalker or looking like an asshole for not waking her up. He opts to wake her up and of course stutters through it. Reyna isn't bothered or impressed, she's just really dismissive. Then she correctly reasons that she can manipulate George into taking her to an amusement park on his dime. So they go to what looks like Todd's Disney World and Reyna has a grand old time while George pays for everything. But he doesn't mind because he's thankful just to be near such a beauty. And this is why I'm glad the manga opened with a flash forward to the happy couple. Otherwise I might not have read past this point. Rain is being a complete jerk and George's utter lack of spine is extremely grating. All the happy families are starting to spoil Reyna's mood as she wonders why she just can't figure out how to do that. So this not date gets redirected to the arcade so Reyna can blow off some stress all over some zombies' heads. George, seeing a conversational in, asks if she likes video games and the distraction causes her to lose a life. George takes the player two spot for the next round and continues the chat about their mutual interest in games. Reyna accuses him of only playing dating sims, and George says he doesn't really play those much anymore. Oh, so you play the more hardcore stuff? No, mostly action games for stress relief. Right now I'm playing SF Dream Image on low difficulty to relax. And then the machine short circuits. Symbolism. 
The broken game pisses Reyna off, and George is out of money, so this not date is officially over. Reyna's also annoyed that George likes the same game series as she does. She also plays SF Dream Image to wind down, but she apparently likes to play it on hard so that when she finally overcomes, the release is even better. She's been stuck on this one level for weeks. Next day, and Raina is having lunch with... I don't know who these people are. I don't want to say friends, because the one is just a complete jerk to Raina, accusing her of only hanging out with them when she can't get a guy, and low-key implying she's a slut. I am not here to defend Raina's actions, but the seething contempt of everyone around her clearly hurts. George isn't having a much better day. The customer whose box he dropped has demanded to see him, so George and his boss go to the guy's place, and he immediately punches George in the face, and then kicks him in the gut while George's boss does nothing! He even hands over the money after the beating, presumably the money taken out of George's salary, so George literally paid to get the shit kicked out of him. Back at work, Reyna is trying to hit on someone else, but this guy is aware of her reputation. He says he's not going to judge her, but follows that up with asking her not to drag others down with her. And the hypocrite isn't even really opposed to sleeping with Reyna. He just doesn't want the reputation hit that comes with it. Reyna figures she'll just have to play games to get back on track, but then remembers she's stuck on that too. Oh, and now it's raining. The all is lost moment! Reyna and George are waiting at the train platform, and Reyna notices the bruises on George's face. Then, guess who shows up but the same muggers as yesterday! But George has so little cash on him that even the muggers feel sorry for him and basically just let him go. On the train ride, Reyna has the idea to see if playing co-op with George will get her through the level she's stuck on, but isn't wild about letting George into her apartment. But she needs to beat this level to settle her mood. She goes up to George to ask for help, and George is weeping openly, because he finds himself so pathetic. Which stops almost immediately after Reyna asks slash orders him to help her beat the level. He just lights up like a puppy. George gives me a headache. They get to Reyna's place, and she makes George wait outside while she changes, but she's nice enough to give him a towel. She berates herself for inviting the fat boy over to play games instead of getting a hot guy to fuck her like usual. She's investing a lot of karmic energy in being able to get through this level. So the game happens, and huh, the characters' backs certainly look like the people controlling them, don't they? Seems like the extra person isn't doing the trick, and Reyna gets all philosophical about how life is just like the game. You get surrounded by mobs and try to survive until you're exhausted, and hello, all the mobs look like the people who are constantly cutting her down. And then she declares that she can't take it anymore. She's gonna die. This got dark. George spots her tears in the reflection and says nothing, but he comes over and saves her from the mob. It clearly means a lot to her, but she can't quite keep herself from snapping about helping out your co-op partner. But to her credit, she follows that up with an apology for not intervening at the station when George was getting mugged and she did nothing. Woo! We finally made it to her acting like a human being. I was afraid I was going to lose you. She asks about his face bruises, and after getting the story, declares that George must be pretty worthless. But then, she's a pretty worthless person too. Uh, no time for introspection, we just got to the boss! I love this, after the understated characterization we just had, the boss is literally called Society and wears a helmet with I'm very superficial and believe everything written on it. So the night's over, right? Level beaten, they have work tomorrow. Raina gives him an umbrella for his trip home. It's a silent walk down the stairs, but George works up the courage to ask if they can play games together again. And Raina's like, screw it, who says this party has to end? Besides, there's so many hard levels left. Get your butt up here, we're gaming all night. The end. Whew, that was really good. Alright, let's talk details, starting with the surprisingly good visual storytelling. Starting with the flash forward to the happy couple now sharing an umbrella, which is a call back forward reference to Reyna not even offering to share an umbrella with George on the way back from the station. Similarly, there's a bunch of visual references to game imagery that rewards rereads. I especially like this one of the city, which apparently has tank fire. And there's just some really impressive artwork, like this panel in the rain, which looks like it was drawn on black, it's so oppressive. 
Also, the totally silent moment of George observing Raina crying, again tying into him watching her in the train reflection. Which is a great example of how George manages to be an actual nice guy. The characterization of George could have very easily drifted into self-insert nerdling who gets a hot girlfriend because he's good at games and he's just such a nice guy not like those handsome jerks. That sort of entitled poison is avoided mostly by making him have the spine of a limp noodle, and yeah, that's its own brand of annoyance, but at least he's not a shitlord. And for as much as people give him shit for being creepy, he displays a shocking amount of emotional awareness. He correctly reasons that Reyna enjoys games more than just casually and takes a decent enough shot at striking up a conversation. He thinks about how him approaching Reyna on the train about her stop might be interpreted, but opts to be helpful in spite of the personal risk. And of course, the final moment where he sees the utter black hole of defeat on Reyna's face while gaming and offers a gentle helping hand. Probably shouldn't have given him the same name as a Costanza. Tells me that our ex-boyfriend was over late last night and yada yada yada, I'm really tired today. Going back to that pin, we have George observing Raina's life and simultaneously not judging her and trying to imagine the types of trials she has. Maybe it's a bit naive, but he's not wrong that having a bunch of guys to juggle isn't easy. Looking at how emotionally aware George is, it's almost a shock that he's such a doormat. But Japan is notoriously judgy of people on the heavy side. Which brings us to Reina, whose actions are very easy to be extremely judgmental of. She cheats on men constantly, is very dismissive of other people, and seems to only treat people transactionally, based on what they can provide her. But most damning of all, from an audience perspective, is how she treats George. Now, he goes along with her far too easily, but her using him as a wallet after we see him get mugged and have his pay cut doesn't really endear her to us. We get some indication of where she's at in her head. This panel appears to be her father telling her to not bother learning anything because she's pretty, so we can assume that her parents didn't do a great job. And this line about having a guy to fuck her all night seems to suggest she's using sex as a form of displacement where she doesn't have to think about her life. This creates the impression that Reyna is stuck in a spiral of making bad decisions to avoid thinking about how unhappy she is. Reyna was waiting for someone to extend her an unqualified kindness before she felt comfortable trusting. George gave her that, and she pretty quickly apologizes for her behavior, now that she doesn't feel the need to be so guarded. So that's Beauty and the Hambeast. It's a really good romance. It focuses more on how the relationship got started, but realizes its characters well enough that you can totally picture what their life together will be like. It's a real artistic achievement, and I just wish I could find out more info on it. I guess this manga is just going to have to stand on its own and hopefully not get lost in the internet. Till next time, I'm Pluto Burns, and this has been Eagle Land.